Hello everybody, welcome to Mathetic Original Channel. Thank you for watching our videos. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe. In today's video, we will talk about the structure of a quadratic function. So uh, we will use tables, graph and expression to model the quadratic function. So let's begin. Giving f of x equal x squared, so we're going to make a table first that includes both positive and negative values for x, and then we're going to explain how the table demonstrates that f of x equal x squared is a quadratic function. Okay, so now to make the table, we select those numbers negative 3, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. So all we're going to do is we're going to plug those numbers. For x, we're gonna substitute x by those number in order to find f of x. Okay, so if x is equal to negative three, then we're gonna have negative three square. So negative three square means negative three times negative three, and negative three times negative three is positive nine. If x is negative two, so Negative 2 squared means negative 2 times negative 2, and that will be positive 4. If x is if x is negative 1, then negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1. If x is 0, 0 times 0 is 0. If x is 1, 1 times 1 is 1. If x is 2, 2 times 2 is 4. And if x is 3, 3 times 3 is 9. So that's the table. Now, let's see if that table represents a quadratic function. First, let's find the first difference. So what do I add to 9 to get 4? Technically, what we do is 4 minus 9 is negative 5 okay let me put it out of the table so that's negative 5 what do I add to 4 to get 1 so that means 1 minus 4 is negative 3 what do I add to 1 to get 0 that means 0 minus 1 is negative 1 what do I add to 0 to get 1? That means 1 minus 0 equals 1. What do I add to 1 to get 4? Which means 4 minus 1 equals 3. What do I add to 4 to get 9? Which means 9 minus 4 equals 5. So that's the first difference. As you can see, the first difference is not constant so we need to look for the second difference so for the second difference we're going to say what do we add to negative 5 to get negative 3 so that's negative 3 minus negative 5 is positive 2 what do i add to negative 3 to get negative 1 so which means negative 1 minus negative 3 equal 2 again what do I add to negative 1 to get 1, which means 1 minus negative 1 is positive 2. What do I add to 1 to get 3, which means 3 minus 1 equal 2. What do I add to 3 to get 5, which means 5 minus 3 equal 2. Okay, so that is the graph, that is uh, the second difference. And as you can see, the second difference is constant. So because... To answer that question, we will say explain how the table demonstrates that f of x equal x squared is a quadratic function. So yes, the table demonstrates that f of x equal x squared is a quadratic function because there is a second common difference. This, there is a second difference. Okay, all right. So and that that one is constant, and that second difference is two. All right, so that's how I know the table represents a quadratic function. Now that we know this is a quadratic function, so we have to graph it. So if we graph this table now, what I did before I saw the video, I go on desmos.com and just graph f of x equal x squared. So if you go desmos.com 
and uh you type graph in calculator you type in the function then that will it will give you the graph so f of x equal x squared so that's the graph for it now remember we see that the graph of, of quadratic function is called a parabola okay the graph is called a parabola the graph of a quadratic function is called parabola parabola and the parabola has a u shape okay so uh, the curve is open up in this case okay the curve is open up and it has a u shape now we gonna answer we're gonna use that graph okay to answer question number two so let's start with question number two so answer the following question about f of x equal x squared so that's this that's the function that we had the table and the graph for so we're gonna answer those questions based on the graph so you say what is the domain of f of x equal x squared now remember that domain or your x value which is along the x-axis and your range or your y or uh, um is your y values or your y values along the y axis so <clears throat> if you look at this graph right here it starts from <clears throat> negative infinity all right so it starts from negative infinity and and it's go all the way to positive infinity so if you look every spot here you're gonna have uh for every x you're gonna have a y value so the domain for this graph go from negative infinity negative infinity to positive infinity okay so that's the interval notation or we can say domain or you can say the domain is x so that x is all real number okay so that x is all real number so that's another way you can write it. set notation that's the interval notation and that is the set notation now what is the range again the range is on your y-axis if you if you look at the graph right here that is the point that is the lowest point on that graph so after this point there is no green below zero right so you see that there is no green below zero so that's mean the graph stuck right here but it's continue up if i if i didn't you know you could have see if you go on desmos you can see the graph continue up all the way all the way up okay so now we can see the range pretty much like start from zero all the way to infinity okay the range start from zero and because zero is also included on the graph we're gonna put a bracket all the way to positive infinity parentheses now we never put bracket next to to infinity or next to infinity so they always have parentheses or you can write it like that say so range is y so that y is greater than zero greater or equal to zero all right so that's y is anything that's above here starting from zero and anything that's bigger than zero are part of the range okay so starting from zero and anything above zero is part of the range like if y is zero you got an x value if y is one there was the x value 
if y is 2 there is x value if y is 5 there are x value and so on and so forth you get the idea so now that we're done with domain range the third question is on what interval or intervals is f of x increasing again looking at the graph when you're reading a graph any graph you're reading from left to right you always read any graph from left to right so if if when you're reading from left to right if the graph is falling down then it's decreasing and if the graph is going up then it is decreasing so looking at this graph right here from here from the left side so we can see from here to here going down here going down going down all the way to here their graph is, the graph is decreasing okay so we can see on this side right here the graph is decreasing okay so we're gonna see decreasing on this side all right so it's decreased from here to here okay and then at this point right here it start increasing so that's at this point right here the graph is increasing all right so we can conclude and say well the graph is decreasing is increasing from zero okay so that's zero right here so now when you're looking at it like once you make that decision you always select the x value okay for the increasing and decreasing you select the x value so it's increasing from x equals zero all the way to x equal infinity okay from x equals zero all the way to x equal infinity so the way i'm gonna put this i'm gonna put uh it's increasing from zero to infinity so that's my increasing interval now decreasing it is decreasing from it is decreasing from negative infinity all to all the way to zero okay so it's decreasing from negative infinity all the way to zero okay so that's that's set for increasing and decreasing also you can write this as a as the inequality form so if i'm gonna write the increasing as uh as an inequality i'll say it's increasing at x x greater than zero okay so x greater than zero is increasing and over here i'll say is decreasing at x less than zero okay so that's another way you can write this it's mean the same thing okay so now over here they say is f of x symmetric now if you look at f of x how do i know if the graph is symmetric if i draw a line right in the middle of this graph then if on both sides of that line of that vertical line have equal distance then it is symmetry now if i look at this line right here if i look at this graph so the middle of that line will be this the actual y intercept so i'm gonna I'm use i'm gonna draw the line down the vertical line because that's the middle of the line if you guys can see that so and 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 on each side of that line check this out over here i have one two three four and over here i got one two three four let me select another point over here let's see over here i got one two three for nine okay and over here one two three you can select any point you want and the same amount the same distance you have on the left of the of that vertical line will be the same distance on the right of that vertical line okay so now yes it is symmetry okay so in this case 
the symmetry line will be when you have a vertical line that means x equal so the symmetry line will be x equal zero okay so your line of symmetry is always x equal whatever number that is okay so whatever number that split the curve in half is your line of symmetry okay whatever the vertical line the vertical line that split the curve in half is your line of symmetry and it's always going to be x equal whatever that line go to now the other question we have is it say does f of x have a maximum or a minimum if so at what point if you look at the the graph right here okay the graph is open up okay that's a u shape so which mean the we don't have a maximum because the graph keeps going up forever or all the way to infinity to infinity but down here you cannot have any point past zero so zero is your minimum okay so that is your minimum all right so we have a minimum okay so and that minimum is what at zero zero so that's your minimum right here that's your minimum point okay and that point is zero zero Now, it asking what are the x intercept of f of x. So in this case, the x intercept is wherever the graph cross the x axis. All right, wherever the graph touch the x axis. So in this case, and and we gotta make y is zero. Okay. So in this case, the graph is touching the x-axis at zero so your x-intercept will be zero zero that's that point right here okay that's your x-intercept and also your y-intercept is zero zero now the quadratic the, uh, the standard form of a quadratic function is the standard form of a quadratic function of quadratic function is is f of x equal ax square plus bx plus c but that function right here that we did earlier which is f of x equal x square x square is what we call the parent this is the parent function for quadratic. Parent function. Now, does the most basic quadratic function you will see? Now, if you look at the standard form of a quadratic function, you're gonna notice that we have x squared here and we have x squared here. So this one is the highest degree. The two is the highest degree in a quadratic function. Okay, so that's two, that's one, and when the number stand by itself is zero. Okay, so let's say if you see an x cube, then it's not quadratic. Okay, if your biggest exponent is more than two, then it's not quadratic. If it is less than two, 
then it's not quadratic okay so a quadratic function will always have the x squared in it always and that will be the biggest biggest exponent will be two okay so if you have x cubed and x squared even though you have x squared it's not quadratic because three is bigger than two all right so when you see a quadratic function, you know it's a quadratic function, a quadratic expression. You know it's a quadratic function because when you check the highest exponent or the highest degree is two. Now, x squared will always appear in every quadratic function. It will always appear. So the difference between the parent function and the standard form is that the a value is one okay in this case a is one and b is zero and c is zero okay a is one b is zero and c is zero that's why there is no x term and there is no constant because the b and c is zero now so this is uh this is the graph for this function okay so that's the graph for this function that's the graph for this function so what we're gonna do is we're gonna identify the vertex of the equation from the graph and then we're also gonna determine the line of symmetry the x intercept the y intercept of the quadratic function and also we're gonna state if the function has a real solution or not okay so let's start with this one so f of x equal x squared plus 2x x squared plus 2x so this is the graph for for f of x equal x squared plus 2x now what is the vertex the vertex is your minimum or your maximum now remember when you have a quadratic function the graph can be open up and it can be open down okay so if it's open up your vertex will be a minimum if it's open down then your vertex will be a maximum Okay, so in this case, in this case right here, the graph is open up. Okay, the parabola is open up. So which means I have a minimum. Okay, if it's open up, I have a minimum. And my minimum is the lowest point on the graph, which is right here. That's my vertex. So in that point right here, I'll say vertex, and that point is negative one, negative one. You see that? It's negative one. So that's zero, that's negative one, left one, and down one. So that's my vertex. Left one, down one. So that's negative one, and negative one. Okay, so that's my vertex. So, now I got my vertex, then if you got your vertex, you can you also have your line of symmetry. To find your line of symmetry, you draw a straight line from the vertex, a vertical line. From the vertex. Okay, so that is your line of symmetry. And, and if you notice that it split the parabola into two halves. So now, that line right here is crossing negative one. Okay, so that's x, a vertical line always have x equal. So that's x equal negative one. So your line of symmetry will be x equal negative one. So that's the line of symmetry and also let's say you didn't have the the graph if you know the vertex your line of symmetry is always the first number of that vertex like negative one okay your line of symmetry is always the x value of the vertex i will repeat line of symmetry is always the x value of the vertex so now we know the vertex we know the line of symmetry so what about the x intercept X intercept is wherever the graph calls the X axis. Okay. Wherever the graph calls the X axis. So in this case, 
you have one over here. So that's X intercept. And you also have one over here. That's X intercept again. So you got two X intercept. You guys see that? So your X intercept are your real solution. The number of X intercept you have is the number of real solution you're going to have. So in this case, you're going to have two real solution because you got two X intercept. So that's going to be two solution. And that's the maximum a quadratic function can have. The maximum solution a quadratic function can have is two. Okay. So a quadratic function can have one solution, two solution, or no solution. So no more than two. So in this case, we have two solution because we have two X intercept and, and, and notice the parabola is open up. Okay. The parabola is open up. So the behavior of the graph is depend of the A value. Okay. So if the A value is positive, okay, if A value is positive greater than zero, then parabola will open up. But if the A value is negative, then your parabola will open down. So the A is what determines what direction the parabola open. So since in this case A is 1, then the parabola open up. So let's check that one over here. The second one. G of X equal to X squared minus 4X plus 5. Now notice if I go back on this one, we have the A value is 1. Okay, so we got A is 1, so that's A, that's B. So we got A equal 1, B equal 2, and C equal 0 because there is no number by itself. Okay, in this case, you got A, B, and C. So you got A equal 2, B equal negative 4, and C equal 5. So now we know that ABC uh, and that's the standard form, all right? So because the standard form is AX squared plus BX plus 5. So that's the standard form of the quadratic function. Now the vertex, again, the parabola is open up. The parabola is open up. And, and, and we expect that because the A value is positive. If the A value is greater than one, greater than zero is positive, then it's going to open up. So the vertex, because it's open up, then we have a minimum. So the vertex is the minimum. So that's point right here. That's your vertex right here. And that vertex is at if you look at uh, that's one, you go right one and up three. So that's vertex. So that's your vertex right here. And that point right here is one and three. One, three. Okay. So the point is one, three. Now, remember, I said once you got your vertex, the X value. So that's the X value of the vertex is one. And the y value of the vertex is 3. Okay, the x value of the vertex is 1. The y value of the vertex is 3. So, the x value of the vertex is your axis of symmetry or line of symmetry. So, we can say for this one, the line of symmetry line of symmetry is x equal 1, which is the x value of the vertex. Now, x intercept. Do we have any x intercept? No, we don't have x intercept. There is no x intercept here. So if there is no x intercept, that means there is no real solution. Okay? No x intercept means equal no real solution okay no real solution so there was no solution here uh now do we have a y intercept 
Yes, the y-intercept right here. That's the y-intercept. The y-intercept is wherever the graph crosses the y-axis. So that's my y-intercept. And if I go back on this question, my y-intercept is zero. Okay, that's also my y-intercept. zero so in my wine set is equal five okay now if you want to write this as a point you gotta say zero five okay so you gotta say zero five if i put it right here so zero five that's as a point over here your white set have to say zero zero now, I want to catch your attention on something. On the y end step, notice it's 5, right? So look back to the function, to the expression itself. 5 is that number that stands by itself. Okay? 5 is the number that stands by itself. So which means this number right here, is your y and step okay this number right here is your y and step the same for the same for this one right here this number is zero okay the y and step is zero is because there is nothing here that's like say plus zero okay and that zero is your y and step so now i got two more that we want to talk about uh so there was a mistake here there is supposed to be a uh, one negative sign so we're going to talk about these two right here now notice on these two the parabola is up and down okay it's a u upside down so the reason for is because in this case we have a uh, the a value is negative as you can see negative x here so that's because that's a negative one okay and here you got a a negative one half and because it's negative that's the reason why it's uh the the, the, the it's curved down instead of curving up okay so remember when the parabola is open down we, that's when you have a maximum so your vertex is a maximum and in this case the maximum point is right here okay so because if you increase now it's increasing here so this graph is increasing here from negative infinity to to uh, one is increasing and from one to positive infinity is decreasing so your maximum point is one five that's your vertex right here so there's the vertex and it is one what so it's negative one and then five okay so now we know the vertex if we know the vertex we know the line of symmetry is the x value of the vertex so the line of symmetry is x equal negative one okay is the first value of the vertex so the x intercept let's look for x intercept x intercept we got an x intercept right here and we got one right here okay so we got two x intercept so because we got two x intercept we have two solution okay two solution let's see if we have any y intercept we have a y intercept over here that's your y intercept right here and that is four, okay? So y intercept is, so this is your x intercept, and this is your x intercept, we got two of them, and that is your y intercept, and the y, notice the y intercept is zero, four, okay? Zero, four. And go back to the equation, to the expression, the last number, the four is the last number that have no x in it. Okay, so again, your y-intercept is the value of c. 
okay the last number in that equation the one that have no x value attached to it is your y intercept okay so that's it now over here over here it's also open down because this is negative <clears throat> uh so which mean we have the maximum so the vertex is the maximum and your maximum point will be right here that's your highest point okay the maximum point is your highest point and that'll be this so that'll be your vertex here vertex and that point is negative 4 1 2 3 negative 4 and 13 all right so you go left 4 and you go up 13 so negative 4 and 13 so that that is your vertex so if that's my vertex my line of symmetry is always the x value of the vertex so therefore the line of symmetry is x equal negative 4 because that's always the x value of the vertex now i got this <clears throat> down so we need to find the x intercept so we have two x intercept we got one here that's the x intercept and we also have one here that's another x intercept so your x intercept again are your solution so because we got two of them then we have two solution okay we have two solution okay so it's like one solution will be x equal nine negative nine and the other one will be x equal one so based on the graph so that'll be our two solution now do we have a y intercept yes y intercept is wherever the graph calls the y-axis and it's crossed it right here five so that's your y intercept y intercept is zero five and again if you look at this equation right here the five is the number that stands by itself so that is your y intercept very easy it's your y intercept the number that stands by itself i want to get your attention on something else notice that this graph is wider than this graph okay this one is wider than this graph so that's because of the coefficient of x if the coefficient of x is between 0 and 1, then the parabola gets wider. Okay? But if the coefficient of x is bigger than 1, then you're going to see the parabola got skinnier. Okay? Than the original one. Now, let's put it all together and use our strategy without technology. So the equation of quadratic function and the vertex of the parabola are given. So insert a question about the function. So we have we have uh, this function. They give us the function and the vertex. And uh, we start graph. We're not even going to graph it. We're going to answer those questions based on the given information. So we have the function and the vertex. The vertex of the function can tell us a lot about the function. Okay. So first question is. Is the vertex a maximum or a minimum? So to know if the vertex is a maximum or a minimum, I have to check the value of a. Okay. So in this one, we have a equal one, a equal one, b equal six, and c equal seven. A equal one, b equal six, and c equal seven. Is the vertex a maximum or a minimum? Because A is positive, so because A is positive, I'm going to have a graph open up. The parabola is going to open up. So that's what my parabola, if I were to graph this function, that's what my parabola would look like. So since it's open up, then my vertex is a minimum. Okay, my vertex is a minimum. Then what is the uh what is the line of symmetry? What is the line of symmetry? So we're doing this now, so we got this done. So what is the line of symmetry? The line of symmetry is if the vertex is negative three, 
negative 3 and negative 2 okay so if the vertex if the vertex is negative 3 negative 2 so the first number the x value of the vertex is my line of symmetry okay so my line of symmetry i'll call it rs is x equal negative 3 okay it's always x equals the number okay never y okay the line of symmetry is always x equals some number and uh now they ask us what is the y intercepts the y intercept of f of x remember the y intercept the y intercept is always if you look at the function is always the number the c value okay so the c value is seven so the y intercept is seven okay the c is seven so y intercept is zero seven so it's always zero x have to be zero but the y value of that will be seven and what is the domain of f of x so every quadratic function every quadratic function in general unless there are some instruct some restriction okay so every quadratic function the domain start from negative infinity all the way to positive infinity okay every quadratic function domain start from negative infinity all the way to positive infinity now what is the range the range of the function is based on your vertex okay so because we know the vertex is open up so the y value of that vertex is the beginning of the range so the y value of the vertex is the beginning of the range so it's going to be from negative 2 all the way to positive infinity because the vertex uh, uh the parabola is open up so it's going up all the way to positive infinity okay so let's say on what interval is f of x increasing on what interval is f of x increasing so if the parabola open up if the parabola open up and that's my minimum loss point so it's not increase from the x value of the vertex from the axis of symmetry which is negative three all the way to infinity so it's gonna be okay because remember that vertex is negative three and negative two okay so that x value of the vertex so we're gonna say it's increasing from negative three all the way to positive infinity all right and on what interval is decreasing so decreasing is is gonna start from negative infinity so we always put the infinity negative infinity first and we always put positive infinity last okay so it's gonna be from negative infinity all the way to negative three all the way to negative three so the graph decreasing like this okay so uh that's it all right last example uh we got f of x equal negative 2x squared plus 4x plus 3 and the vertex is 1 and 5 1 5 0.15 so uh is the vertex a maximum or a minimum well since let's identify abc right so a is equal to negative 2 b is equal to 4 and c is equal to 3 so a is negative so if a is negative so that's mean the parabola gonna look like this okay so it's gonna be open down so if the parabola open down then i have a maximum point and that maximum point is my vertex okay so vertex will be a maximum so 
So that's one five, and that will be one five. Uh, what is the last symmetry? So if the vertex is one five, the first value of the vertex is my line of symmetry. So my LS will be X equal one. Okay, that's one. And what is the Y intercept? Again, the Y intercept is always the C value of the equation of the function. So in this case, it's three. Okay, it's always the C value of the function. In this case, it's three. So my Y intercept would be zero, three. What is the domain? Again, the domain is all x values so it's gonna start from negative infinity to positive infinity so that's the domain of all quadratic function unless there is restriction what is the range of f of x now the range is based on your vertex so the y value now because it's open down because it's open down that's mean I'm going to start with negative infinity. So I'm going to have negative infinity. So if it's negative infinity, you put it first. And then I'm going to go up all the way to 5. Okay, so that's the y value of the vertex. All the way to 5. So that will be my vertex, uh, my range right here. And on what interval does the graph increase, does the function increase? So if the if if the function if the graph of the function is open down, that's mean it's not increased from negative infinity all the way to that point right here, which is the x value of the vertex. So it's gonna increase from negative infinity to one, which is the x value of the vertex. Okay. And then it's going to decrease from the x value of the vertex to positive infinity. So it's decreasing from 1 to infinity. Okay. So that's all. So that's, that's uh, all we have about a uh, quadratic function. So uh, if you have any question, let us know. You know, uh, comment, suggestion question so let us know in the comment box uh again thank you for watching and i'll see you next time for the next video